One goal I had in mind when I started working on my short film Psychic Sauna was that I wanted to work on my environment design. Personally, I have always enjoyed environment design and building worlds in other mediums, so I wanted to transition those skills to 3D. Psychic Sauna features multiple environments, which all took a pretty significant amount of time to make. And while I don't claim to be the greatest environment designer in the world, I learned a lot during this process and wanted to share with you all my experiences. Tip 1. How to use reference effectively. Before starting a project, I highly recommend you go in with some sort of idea of what you want your environment to be. This could be a general idea, but I would also recommend that you get some reference beforehand. Since 3D is a visual medium, try to get some pictures, some videos, paintings, anything to give you some sort of starting off point, even just a general idea of how something is actually laid out. Now this is not groundbreaking information, reference is a very common starting place. What piece of advice I don't often see when relating to reference is to encourage people to use multiple sources of reference, for example, not just the same location or object, but from multiple places and different mediums, which you then combine to create a unique image. If you are creating imaginary environments, it's so helpful to find multiple different frames of reference, take the most interesting parts from each one of them and combine them into a unique setting. Take for example this scene from Psychic Sauna. Before even opening up Blender, I had several frames of reference. I had these finished saunas from real life. I was looking at interior design and I found these things called conversation pits that I thought they were really interesting. And I was also thinking about Akira Toriyama and how he designs buildings. Taking elements from each one, I was able to combine them into a unique setting. Finally, when it comes to reference, I highly, highly encourage you to find inspiration from outside of your medium. Have you noticed that within the Blender community especially, you will see projects that are basically a replication of a style or a recreation of a tutorial? While these are good learning opportunities, they're not really examples of showing your own unique perspective as an artist. That's why I encourage you to find inspiration from anywhere and everywhere. Art tends to stagnate when it only references itself. I think the fantastic artist Gary Panther put it best. If you have one person you're influenced by, everyone will say you're the next whoever. But if you rip a hundred people off, everyone will say you're so original. Tip 2 you cannot add quality later. When I was working as a theater tech in college, I had a really great boss tell me once, you cannot add quality later. I think about this quote at the start of every project, scene, texture, whatever. It is a constant reminder in my life. When it comes to larger projects, like environments especially, doing things right from the beginning is going to save you a ton of time later on. Now I wanna make this clear. This is a reminder for those of you who have made projects in the past and know that you are capable of finishing things. If you need a more in-depth talk about these subjects, I suggest you check out my first two videos about finishing projects. Because at the beginning of your 3D career, I think the important thing is to just make something and put it out there. Getting caught up in doing something perfectly as a beginner is a recipe for never finishing things. For more intermediate artists, I want you all to think about this quote. Specifically for those moments where you tell yourself, ah, I'll do that later, or I don't need to apply scale to this. Who cares if my file structure is a mess? I don't need to name each one of those objects. All of these little things will come back to haunt you later on. It's the accumulation of little things that you skipped out on that will cause big problems in the future. So please, Make sure you don't cut corners that will harm you later on. Tip 3. Let the camera dictate the work. Dovetailing with my previous point, I don't want you to have to put in more work than needed. So at the beginning, find the focal point of your environment. This could just be a placeholder. And then get your camera where you want it to be. That way, you are only focusing on what the viewer will actually see, and you're not wasting time with things that no one will even realize are there. Also, by using the camera effectively and composing shots in interesting ways, we can cut down on the amount of additional work that is needed. For example, look at the render of an object from a standard viewpoint to a render of a more composed angle. By framing what we have already modeled in an interesting way, 
we can cut down on the amount of additional work we need to do. Tip four, the little things make a big difference in your scene. The little details that people feel but don't necessarily notice are what take a good render to a great render. The fortunate thing about these details is that they are usually not very difficult to implement. However, they can take some time to adjust to get the feel that you are looking for. Let's look at this scene from Psychic Sauna. What we have now are models with textures applied in the shader editor's lighting, nothing more. The first thing that we are gonna do is we are gonna go to Eevee's render settings, and we are gonna turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. You can already see that just by checking these boxes, it's made a huge impact on our scene. Each one of these sections have an individual drop-down menu that you can tweak as needed. Next up, lighting. This is a very simple lighting setup. All I did was add an emissive shader to the light bulbs and then use a standard gray background with a strength of one for the world lighting. After that, I added some fog. If you haven't learned about the wonders of fog in 3D, it is an absolute miracle. There are multiple ways of adding fog to a scene, but some of the most common ways are adding a volumetric shader to an object that encompasses a certain area of your scene, as well as mispasses in compositing. It's too much for this video, but I've included some very helpful references in the description below. After that, I added some simple dust and particle effects. I don't know why adding some simple particle effects in a scene can really make it come alive, but it just does. I think by adding some very subtle movement to an otherwise static scene can really give a scene some life. For instance, things like falling leaves, floating dust. These are all things that can really liven up your environment. They're not absolute necessities, but they can really go a long way. Finally, I did some very simple color correction in Blender's compositor. It is truly amazing what a few tweaks of one node can do to a scene. Color correction is often the step that can take a render from amateurish to looking pro. So I hope you found these tips beneficial. Making great scenes takes a lot of time and it will not happen overnight, but I think that these skills will at least push you in the right direction. If you've made any scenes that you're proud of, I'd really love to see them. And if you're curious to know more about my short film and hear the lessons I've learned along the way, please feel free to subscribe.